Yeah. As Chaz Bono helps bring transgendered people into the mainstream, more people are asking, what is life like for this often overlooked part of the LGBT community? So with me is Chaz Bono, author of Transition, the story of how I became a man. And joining us are other trailblazers in the transgender community. Isis King, fashion model and the first transgender contestant in America's Next Top Model. Harmony Santana, a transgender actress in the new movie Gun Hill Road. And Laverne Cox, transgender actress and producer who starred in her own TV show, VH1's Transform Me. I feel like I'm introducing people as part of a beauty. Joining me now is <laughs> Harmony Santana. I want to start with Chaz. So Chaz, uh, we just spoke about, about your story, about acceptance. What, is it, what has been the most difficult part of the transition for you? Of transitioning? Yeah. You know, I thought we were here to talk about trans people in Hollywood. We've got three unbelievably beautiful, talented women up there and uh and we're talking about transgender 101 here yeah well we I mean people at home want to know about transgender 101 not everybody's as informed as the people on this panel and that's why we have you here so i want to know what's been the most difficult part of of transitioning for you chaz Th there hasn't been anything difficult about about it for me the tra the difficult part came before i transitioned before i had the courage to transition and and uh, once I finally got that strength, you know, my life has, has just been a, a tremendous blessing. Yeah. Okay, so Laverne, you said that you were never a typical boy growing up in Alabama. What do you mean by that? Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> um, I, well, well we, I, we have um, really specific rules in this society about boys are supposed to act this way and girls are supposed to act a certain way. And I never acted the way people thought that boys should act. Um, and when I was in third grade, my third grade teacher, um, Miss Ridgeway, called my mom and said that we need to get your son into therapy right away or he'll end up in New Orleans wearing a dress. <laughs> Um, and you said that that wasn't so, you probably thought that wasn't such a bad thing. Right? Actually, at the time, I thought it would be the worst thing ever for me to end up um, in New Orleans wearing a dress because I had in, um, learned from the society around me and from my mother and from the therapists and my teachers that being trans was awful and was terrible. I had, um, internalized a lot of transphobia. And I, and I went to the therapist, and um, I remember the therapist asked me if I knew the difference between a boy and a girl. And in my infinite wisdom as an eight year old, I said, Well, I don't think there is a difference. Um, up until that time, everyone was telling me that I was a boy, but I always felt like I was you a girl felt, inside. You felt that you were um, a girl inside. And, 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 and a lot of trans people say that they were, they used to try to, when they were a child, they would try to hide it. They didn't, they felt uncomfortable as, as since they can remember. Harmony, tell me about your story. You said that you, f you felt different since you can remember as well. Right. Um, well, for me, um, I, when I was little, I didn't know much about the transgender community. I didn't know what that was. All I know was gay, and that's wrong. And, uh, but I always wanted to feel pretty, and I looked up to my older sister, because she's so beautiful to me, and she would go shopping, and I would go with her, and um, I don't know, I always wanted to be pretty. Wait, that's something that we're gonna, we wanna talk about a little bit more, because you said that you, you felt gay, or that you were gay? Uh, because not all, all I knew was I liked boys, yeah. and that was wrong, yeah. and I liked heels, and I played around with, like, a T-shirt on my head, I think, like, if it was long hair. <laughs> yeah, because not all <laughs> trans people identify as gay, and so right. we're, we're going to talk about that a little bit more. I want to find out about ISIS. When okay. you said that you felt that you were born in the wrong body. Yeah. I've always felt like, like she said, I had the T-shirt on my head also. <laughs> I always played in my mother's clothes, and I just knew that I was different from everyone else that I'd seen in school. And I would, at times, be jealous when I couldn't play or do the things with the girls that they were able to do with each other. And I had to be pushed to this image of what a guy should be, and I never felt like that. Mm -hmm. Hey, Chance, I want to get back to you and talk about this, uh, because Harmony mentioned she said that she thought that she was gay. Uh, many trans people will, will identify as gay initially, I guess, because they feel that they have to identify as something, but then they don't really identify as gay once they realize what it is. And you don't, you don't identify as gay, do you? Even though initially you, you said you were a lesbian. No, of course not. <clears throat> no, but it's, it's very easy to confuse when you're growing up sexual orientation with gender identity and especially you know for uh, people that were older and still there's so little information that it's easy it's like you know puberty hits and at least for me it was obvious you know i knew i liked women i had always felt like a boy but i felt i figured oh well you know I, i'm a lesbian and i guess that's how lesbians feel mm. isis in high school you, you know it took 
I'm sorry. Go ahead, Chad. Go ahead. Go ahead, Finn. No, I said it, it took it took time to kind of unravel that and and understand that they're two separate issues. Okay, Isis. In high school, you said you identified as gay. Why? Um, I lived a life as a I guess quote unquote gay male because at that point, I didn't have any role models as trans. I didn't even think it would be possible for me to make a big step like that. So living in Maryland where I lived, where there were only maybe one or two gay people in school, how could I come out as being trans on top of that when that was such a minority group? Mm. So I lived that life, and when I felt comfortable enough and did my research enough, I when it made it happen. Laverne, did you ever identify as gay? You know, it's, um, I, I did think I was. What the interesting thing is, I was, I was thinking about um, this today, a lot of the bullying that kids experience a, as kids really has to do with them, with, with gender, mm -hmm. with people not conforming to a, a gender role, and we say that it's gay. Historically, we've often um, um, conflated gender identity and sexual orientation. They're very different things. So it's, it's how do we begin to really educate people to think of gender in a different um, way that it's not, this, this has nothing to do with who you're attracted to. Mm -hmm. um, as someone recently, I, I read someone said, being gay is about who you want to go to bed with, and being trans is about who you want to go to bed as. Um, and who and you want to wake up as, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. So they're very, very different things. But in the homophobic and transphobic imagination, historically, we've conflated those things, yeah. and we continue to. And I want to ha have a conversation. We're going to have a, uh, an in-depth conversation about that, because there is some discussion in the gay community about who should belong in the gay community, gay, lesbian, transgender, bisexual community, and Trans, questioning. Trans folks are having that discussion, the, yeah, having that discussion as well, and we're going to talk more about that. Yes. Well, let's talk about your personal story now, Laverne, if you can mm -hmm. tell me. And so once, you, once uh, your teacher, your third grade teacher said, oh, your son needs therapy, yes. and he's going to end up in a dress in New Orleans, you mm -hmm. thought it was bad then, but now, you know, not well, so much. What about the acceptance among your, your family? What happened from then? You know, the interesting thing is that I do want to say, though, that I internalized so much transphobia because of that, because of my experience is growing up in Alabama and it wasn't until I moved to New York and met actual trans people and said oh my god all the misconceptions that I had about transgender people were completely erroneous and so I think that's really the journey for most people out there who might have confusion about trans folks that it's really just about getting to know someone. Chaz talk to us about growing up as, as a child and knowing that you're different and, and sort of how you internalize that that must be very difficult as a person who feels that they were born into the wrong body. It is. It's incredibly difficult. I mean, it makes kind of every aspect of life difficult. And, and I, you know, I felt I didn't even realize uh, how it affected so many things. But I was, I was always uncomfortable uh, until I transitioned. Yeah. Did you did you ever share that before? I, when you, I said you came out as lesbian first, but you never shared that with your family, did you? That you thought that you might be born the wrong sex, or did you just say I I think that I'm gay? Um, I know I, I never said that I mean I, I th you know I thought that there was something wrong with me that, that you know I I grew up I knew about gay gay and lesbian people but I didn't know anything about you know transgender people and so I thought that there's there's must be something wrong with me and and it seemed like something I couldn't talk about at all yeah uh, this must be some sort of as I said record to have you know, <laughs> four transgender people on and a gay man talking on national television about the, this issue. We must be making history in some way <laughs> by doing this. Isis, talk to me though, seriously though, about uh, being a child because the trauma of growing up and knowing that you're different can have repercussions on the rest of your life. Okay. Um, honestly, I grew up with a strong mother who dealt with a lot of things on her own. She had me when she was 17, so we have a really close bond. That was something that I pretty much kept to myself, kept inward, and I lived my life. I think um, I had a pretty normal childhood. I kept most of those things behind closed doors to myself when everyone was gone, and pretty much I got a full scholarship to college, went away, and that's when I really started to make decisions for my future and set things up for how they would be. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy living as a transgender person in America even in 2011 when we think that we're so far advanced because many people, many trans people live in fear of their lives Absolutely. and also you live in a shelter. I do. I live in uh, Green Chimneys which is a runaway homeless youth program. Um, I live there for about a year and a half now. Um, I became homeless after high school. Um, 
Which, I is, left. which many transgender people become homeless because their families, their families put them out. They right, don't want to accept it. Their families put them out. I left on my own, sort of saying, because I went through so much with my mom's How old uh, were you? step boyfriend. I was 18, turning 19. On your own, yeah. on the street as a trans and, woman. Um, I went from friend's house to friend's house, and after a while, I stayed with my best friend uh, for like about six months, and then he had to move to Florida, so he referred me to a covenant, the Covenant House, which is a shelter downtown, and um, then I stayed there for a month, and they referred me to Green Chimneys, where, I'm, where I've been able to grow as myself, Harmony. How long have you been away from your family? Uh, since 2009. 2009. Okay, we're going to talk more about the hardships of being a trans person uh, in America. And also we're going to talk about this controversy, even in the gay community, among LGBT community. Do transgender people really belong in that community? We're going to talk about that after a quick break. We are back talking about transgender people in today's America. Okay, so we were talking before about this whole issue of being part of the gay community. And you know, the, the gay, there's talk in the gay community about, wait a minute, why, why are transgender people part of the gay community when many don't identify as gay? That's where the focus uh, and the money I, is. You know that. Go, go ahead, Chaz. Let me, go ahead. Yeah, no, let me say, I think there's a, a, a few reasons uh, why you know, even though there are certain differences, of course, between, there's a huge difference between sexual orientation and gender identity, but um, number one, and Laverne touched on this earlier, we're all kind of discriminated against more based on inappropriate um, gender expression more than actual sexual orientation. And the other thing is a lot of us spent time in the gay or lesbian community at one time on our road to discovering, you know, that we were transgender. And also, and I don't think a lot of people know this, but trans women were instrumental in, in the Stonewall riots, which is really the, you know, the birth of the modern gay movement, it, and then kind of got pushed aside. And Chaz, you're right, it was trans women, it was also drag queens, as we say, right. it was cross-dressers, it was a whole, whole number of people. And so, but, so I want to ask the, ask the panel here, you can understand then, if you identified as gay or lesbian, before you became transgender and then all of a sudden you don't identify, you can understand someone in the community going, wait a minute, then what's going on here? Why are you part of our community then? Well, lots of, well, lots of folks don't identify, um, um, trans folks don't, didn't identify as gay or lesbian. And I think that's a legitimate question, yeah. don't you? It's Everyone's different. Educating, letting yeah. them know, like, I live my life this way, that's what you viewed me as, but I was never a gay male. I never lived my life as a, I mean, I lived that life, but did I ever identify as a gay man? No. Yeah. Because I knew from a little kid that I was different from everyone else. It's just you have to learn about it and find out. It was different than now when they can look at look at us on TV and say, oh, that's me, versus mm -hmm. when we're little and you don't see that on TV at all. Well, Chaz, Laverne, Harmony, Isis, thank you all. This was, I mean, what a, what a great conversation this was. My, and congratulations to Chad again uh, on the Emmy nominations. That is great, great thank news. You. And also I want to tell you thank that you, you can see Harmony and Gun Hill Road. It's playing in select cities and Laverne is appearing in the upcoming films Carla, Musical Chairs, and Grand Street. Wow. Busy actress. Also, you can see Isis on America's Next Top Model, the All Stars edition. It's premiering in September, on September 14th, on the CW. And again, thanks to everybody for watching. Have a good night.